Okay, so today uh, we will have some supplementary uh, uh, notes about the Schrodinger's equation, and yeah, so so this is yeah, so this is uh, it's like about uh, how does the Schrodinger's equation come from, and actually Richard Feynman, which is a very famous person, he has joined the uh, Manhattan Project to uh, to. Um, to invent the uh, atomic bomb, you know, in in World War Two during the World War Two, and 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 yeah, he has said, uh, where did we get that equation from? That equation means the Schrodinger's equation, and he said nowhere it is not possible to derive it from anything you know. It came out of the mind of Schrodinger's. <laughs> Very interesting. He also told, told us that you th there's no no reason <laughs> there's no reason and actually actually the fundamental uh, the fund uh, the foundation of the equation is structure to be li a linear differential equation so you actually I I think you should have known um, how to solve the linear differential equation or what is actually a different uh, linear differential equation and based on yeah, we can, we can use the classical um, en uh, energy conservation and also consistent with the uh, de Broglie relation. We can somehow know why the Schrodinger's equation would be like that. So the solution, we also assume that the solution is a wave function, uh, is the wave function which contains all the information that can be known about the system. So this is very vague, <laughs> uh, very like it's like a mystery. Uh, it's a mystery. Okay, so before we need to really derive uh, the Schrodinger's equation, we need some postulate, something like what we have done in the relativity. We need to postulate to. Uh, to come up with the the theory in the relativity here for solving this equation, we also need some sort of a postulate, 一些假设. So the first one is that we will assume we assume the the solution to the solving this equation to be a plane wave, uh, to be a plane wave. So in the past, usually when we need to uh, do some math. It should be something like uh, someone, or maybe the teachers or professor, give you an equation, and then you try to solve it. But now it's not. Now you you try to think what is the equation, and now you think you come up with the solution first, and then you try to think what should be the equation, and then you try to think an equation that fits this solution, and then when you play with this equation then you can uh, find more interesting uh, characteristic uh, from it <laughs> so it's like uh, a magic okay so here uh, we assume we assume the uh, solution to the Schrodinger's equation is a plane wave and the plane wave is looking like this one phi of xt is exponential to i times kx minus omega t. So in actually in chapter 33, when we learn the uh, uh, EM wave, EM wave, we know uh, the EM wave for the E field, E of xt will be something like EM cosine uh, of kx minus omega t. If you still remember, I, I suppose you you should remember. <laughs> Although I will provide it on probably I will provide it on the forum, but definitely you should remember it. <laughs> and and at that time the E field is is something like this, it's a real function because the E M wave should be should be a real real uh real signal. So we don't have the complex part, but here we will, we will allow the 
we should allow the the wave function to be a complex function. So rather than having only the real part cosine of kx minus omega t, we also include the imaginary part, which is somehow like uh, uh, somehow like plus i uh, sine kx minus omega t. So you you know the Euler's identity. So so this is the complex exponential like this. Of course, you can still multiply something in front, but if it is linear, then all this ray function should be the solution to the equation. Okay. So and then there's the next uh, postulate is the de Broglie relation. I already mentioned in in the original uh, slides of this chapter. So uh, momentum, momentum is, is a variable for the particle and also energy is also, uh, is also uh, a characteristic or a variable of the particle. So these are variable for particle, particle. And actually, uh, omega, angular frequency, and also this is the uh, wave number. K is the wave number, which is inversely proportional to the wavelength. Uh, if you still remember, K is 2 pi over lambda. Ah, lambda is the wavelength. So these are two variable. These are two variable for the, for the waves, for the waves. So no matter for EM wave, or whatever wave, and also for metal wave, they should have the duality between the particle and the wave. And these are the two uh, equations to link the variable uh, for the particles and the variable for the waves. So we have a P equals h bar k, P equals h bar k, and also E over h bar omega or in uh, originally we have a E equals HF, which is actually the same thing, which is actually the same thing. Or here we have a P equals H over lambda, if you still remember. But uh, I already mentioned before, usually using H bar in, in many equation will make things more elegant. So we use H bar here. Actually, in in quantum world, we will um, we will use the concept called the operator. We will use the concept called operator, which is nothing special. Which is nothing special, but in notation we put a hat. We put a hat on top of the variable, so we may say, oh, this is the momentum operator. We can use the momentum operator to observe the the momentum of the wave function, or you can use the energy operator to observe the energy of the wave function. And usually the operator may be something like multiply by a constant or taking derivative or taking derivative and then multiply by the constant. So, which is something like the gradient operator you learned before. For the gradient, if you still remember the gradient operator, which is like taking the derivative in different uh, spatial dimension. So here we have the momentum operator and also the energy operator. We don't use E hat here, we use H hat here. Actually, H is the short form for a name, Hamil Hamilton, Hamiltonian, uh, Hamiltonian. 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 Yeah, actually, in uh, well, well, when I was in uh, year three of my bachelor study, I go to the physics department to study the classical mechanics. So not only learning the uh, simple uh, uh, Newton's law of motion, but also we need to learn the Lagrangian mechanics, the Hamiltonian mechanics, something like that. So Hamiltonian is. Yeah, it's a, a famous uh, decision to, uh, to, to contribute on the classical mechanics. And actually, the, the modern physics, the quantum mechanics, 
does not jump up uh, suddenly. There are some progress between the classical mechanics and the and the and the and the, and the modern physics and the quantum mechanics. So actually, this H stands for the Hamiltonian. So, yeah. So this is the complicated part. So let's consider the momentum operator. Mo momentum operator. If you still remember P equals H bar K in the previous page, and we know P hat is the momentum operator. So let's make things more complicated. Uh, we, we already know the wave function is a plane wave, and it is like this form, exponential to I kx minus omega t, which is the complex uh, exponential. And this is the plane wave in the complex domain. So what we would like to do is that we would like to come up with uh, what should be this momentum operator. What should be this thing in order to uh, when we when we have this operator acting on the wave function, we should able we should be able to get this get this thing, which is like oh we use this to observe the we use this to observe the wave function and then this wave function is still there, but it uh, pump out this term which is actually the the momentum. Well, what we think is actually like this. So let us try to try to imagine what should be this uh, this momentum operator. So we can try to plug in this this wave function here. And actually, I uh, we need something like the uh, derivative derivative and multiply by something to make things. Um, yeah, to, to pump out this term, to pump out this term, because derivative is a linear operator. Multiplying things is also a linear operation. So we would, try, we would like to use this kind of uh, operation to, to construct the, the operators, all, all, all the operators in the quantum mechanics. So let's see, suppose we need to pump out with this uh, h bar k. And then we need to take derivative to this. We need to take derivative of this. So here we have the k. We can imagine here. We would like to have h bar and also k. However, uh, in this wave function, we only have k here. We don't have uh, h bar. So probably we need to multiply h bar in the front. We need to multiply h bar in the front. Maybe I use another color for h. Mm. Maybe I pink. So this is h bar. So probably we need to multiply h bar in the front to, to come up with this term. And here we find a k here. So probably we should take the derivative with respect to x rather than taking the derivative with respect to t. So that if we take the derivative with respect to k, for the chain rule, we would multiply i k in the front, right? And so if we take the derivative uh, with respect to x, a partial derivative with respect to x, there will be i k in the front, and then we also multiply h bar, so that it becomes i h bar k. So we need to cancel this i, so we need to divide by i. Then we will be able to find that oh, this should be a reasonable form for the momentum operator. <laughs> this should be the order. So when we try to do this thing, we have h bar over i, and then take the derivative of this one. So this is exponential function, taking the derivative will be itself. And then for the chain rule, we need to multiply by i k. So i and i cancel. So finally, it becomes h bar k, which is actually the momentum of the wave function. Uh, momentum of the wave function. So which is like uh, we have an operator operate on this uh, on this uh, wave function. 
in linear algebra, you can also regard it as a vector. <laughs> Actually, a function is a vector. So if an operator operate on the on the on a vector, then it becomes the vector multiplied by a multiplied by a a, a a value. So this is called in linear algebra. Uh, it is called the eigenvalue. Oh, this is called the eigenvalue. This is called the eigenvalue, and this is called the eigenfunction in linear algebra. But for quantum mechanics, they call it the eigenstate. The eigenstate. Ah, 就是特征的状态啊，它特征的状态。那这个是特征值啊，特征值。So if you if you just uh take the more operator for a non-eigenstate, then it might not be the original function multiplied by by itself. Maybe you need to add something else. Uh, so, but actually, this this thing this thing is very interesting. If you have learned something about the matrix multiplication, you should be able to know. Maybe, uh, if you know, uh, maybe we have a matrix one, two, three, four multiplied by a multiplied by another vector, maybe uh, two, one, something like this. So you know the matrix multiplication will be like one multiplied by two plus two multiplied by one, so it's four, and then three multiplied by two is uh, six, and then plus four is ten. So this is the operator. This is the linear operator. This is the vector, but this is not a uh, two one multiplied by 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 a uh, by a constant. It's not the case. It is something like uh, 4, 2, 4, 2 plus uh, 0, 6, something like this. So this is 2 times this one, but we need to add something else. So this is not an eigenvector for this linear operator. This is a language from the, from the linear algebra. And so for some for some vector for a specific uh, matrix or some or spe for a specific linear operator there is some vector that uh, when you operate this operator on this uh, vector then it's like the original vector multiplied by a, by a constant and here you can regard this function is a is a vector and then we have a linear operator here and if it if this operator acting on this vector, and then it comes out of the this same vector, but multiplied by a constant, then we will consider this is an important vector, and this value is also important. And actually, this value is actually the momentum of the wave function. So we call this one the momentum operator. So it's like p hat equals h bar over i. Uh, partial partial x and the next is the energy operator we would like the we would also like the energy operator the Hamiltonian which can give you the h bar omega or hf so we try to do the same thing we would like to have the Hamiltonian operator acting on the wave function to give you the h bar omega. So we put this uh, plane wave, plane wave here, and then actually we would like to have, we would like to also have h bar here. So we also need to multiply by h bar in, in the in the front, and also we need this omega. We need this omega, and you can observe this. Here we have, uh, we have omega here. So here you need to take the partial derivative with respect to t. So then for the chain rule, you will get minus i omega, minus i omega. Uh, rather than taking the derivative with respect to x, then it will still give you i k in the front. So in order to get this term, we need to take the derivative with respect to t here. But of course, we need uh, we will have an additional i negative i in the front. So uh, uh, negative i in the front. So 
in this case we need to multiply by another i to cancel the negative i the negative i so so if we if we take the derivative of the wave function with respect to t and then multiply by i h bar it will be like uh, i h bar here and then taking the derivative of this one will be itself and therefore the chain rule we multiply by negative i omega which is here and then you see i square is uh, negative one so with this uh, negative sign it becomes plus one uh, and then we also have h bar omega here so if we use this as an operator acting on the plane wave we will get we will get h bar omega which is actually the energy of the wave function the energy of the wave function so here we also define the energy operator to be uh, i h bar partial partial t okay so um okay so here we also want to have something called the kinetic energy operator because uh, in order to write out the, um, the Schrodinger's equation we would like to have something inspired by the classical mechanics and the most possible thing we would like to use is the conservation of energy we assume there is no um, loss in between then we can use the conservation of energy and the conservation can, uh, and the total energy should consist should be consist of a uh, kinetic energy and also the potential energy. The potential energy depends on the outside whether there are something like a gravitational potential or even electric potential like what we have uh, described in chapter thirty eight. We put some voltage and then the charged particle will <coughs> will be in the uh, potential electric potential field okay so probably we also need the kinetic energy operator so in classical uh, classical uh, mechanics we know without consider the relativistic effect the kinetic energy is something like one half mv squared and as I mentioned usually in uh, quantum mechanics we seldom use one half mv squared we yeah we tend to like you uh, using the p square over 2m but actually they are the same thing you know uh, p equals mv so actually mv square or over m then it will be m uh, uh, mv quantity square and then over 2m will be like uh, one half mv square so actually they are the same thing so we also like this kinetic energy operator this kinetic energy operator to generate this term to generate this term and originally we already have the momentum operator so p square is something like we act this momentum operator uh, momentum operator on the wave function twice then it will be p squared because when you add this momentum operator on the wave function it will give you the momentum if you add it on the momentum operator uh, if you add it on the wave function twice then it will give you p squared because when when the when the p hat act on the wave function it not it's not only giving you the 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 momentum but also the original function so if you act on at the momentum operator again then and it will still give you another momentum so acting this uh, momentum operator twice on the wave function and then over 2m will should give you the kinetic energy of the wave function so that's how uh, we like to uh, construct the kinetic energy operator so here we have 1 over 2m and then p acting on p so we have 1 over 2m and then if you still remember the p hat is a h bar over i and then times a partial partial x times partial partial x 
and then we need to add it again so we also have h bar over i partial partial x so this is easy because this is a constant to x so we can just uh, put it out we have h bar square over 2m 2m here and then i i times i is i square so we have a negative sign here and then this is uh, partial derivative of x this is another partial derivative of x so we have the second partial derivative of x so this is the kinetic energy operator even though the kinetic energy should be a positive value one half mv squared but interestingly we have a negative sign in the front <laughs> interestingly so we will have the kinetic energy operator like this form like this form okay so um, here so here we would like to use the conservation of energy uh, actually this is inspired by the classical mechanics we still although the classical mechanics doesn't give you the correct uh, correct result correct prediction to the phenomenon in the quantum world but this conservation and for energy can still inspire us to write out the uh, Schrodinger's equation so here we have h bar uh, h hat h hat the Hamiltonian operator equals the kinetic energy operator plus the potential energy so this is the total energy Hamiltonian is the total energy and then k k is the k is the kinetic energy plus the potential energy uh, so this makes sense this makes sense so if we add this one on the wave function it should be equal to this whole thing acting on the wave function u is the potential energy and potential energy is always um, a function of the of the position of the position okay so so if you still remember uh, what is x hat what is k hat then we can just uh, put it here h hat is i h bar partial partial t partial partial t so the left hand side become i h bar partial partial t to the wave function and then for the right side the kinetic energy operator is actually this one so we put it here we have negative h bar square over 2m times uh, the second partial derivative of x plus the potential energy and then times phi times phi so this is also the wave function this is also the wave function and actually this is uh, derived in 1D if it is in 3D we not only use this uh, partial derivative with respect to x we will write it as a Laplacian uh, in, in, yeah, in chapter 33 when we learn the wave equation we also have this uh, Laplacian which is the partial derivative, second partial derivative in, in space domain uh, in space domain so in, in 3D the Schrodinger's equation will look like this thing so if you try to uh, Google the Schrodinger's equation maybe on Wikipedia you can find all the, the Schrodinger's equation look like this and rather than writing x inside the wave function we, we use our vector which is like um, in xyz direction something like that actually we don't necessarily use the Cartesian coordinate at all maybe we will use the spherical coordinate for the hydrogen uh, potential something like this, like this. and uh, yeah so the next the next step is actually actually we if we assume if we assume the the wave function is simple enough probably that um, if the um, if the potential is not a uh, time varying then let's see whether we can also uh, separating the variable for the wave function in two parts the one part only consists of the 
of the information related to the position and the other part only related to the information related to the time so we try to separate this thing out and then we try to plug in this one into the soiling just equation and then we will find that um, we will find that on the left side we take derivative with respect to with respect to t so this one will come out this one will come out this is the part related to the time so we have the partial derivative of t and then psi t of t and then on the right side and then on the right side here u times this one yeah so u times this one times this one so we only distribute this one inside we only distribute this one inside because uh, this is the second derivative with respect to x not for the t so the t can just come out the t can just uh, the t part can just come out and then this second derivative only related to the position uh, wave function and then yeah this is also multiplication so this is just live outside and then doing the same thing when we use the separable of variables we also try to separate separate the variables here so we try to move this term to the right side and then move this term to the uh, move this term to the left side so that on the left side we have this one put in here and then divided by phi t of t here and then we still keep i h bar here so on the left side it is only related to t but not related to x but on the right side uh we should have this whole term here this whole term here and then divided by phi of x here so the whole the whole term on the right side only related to x but not related to t and the small trick here is put the i h bar on the left side so that the dimension of the left side and on the right side is the energy uh, is the energy and you know this is a function of t this is a function of x and if they are equal if they are always equal to each other which means they are all constant according to what we have uh, uh, what we have known so this is actually the energy this is actually the energy so we can we have already separate the variables so this equation equal to a constant and this equation also uh, equal to a constant the energy so we have a joint uh, equation here so this one equal to uh, actually this one this one equal to e so we may try to move this term to the right side and then you will see that on the left side we have a partial phi t partial t equals exponential to i h uh, e over i h bar and then phi t so this is only a first order uh, differential equation the solution is nothing but an exponential function the solution is nothing but an exponential function if you move this term to the left side and then multiply by i so it become a uh, positive i on the left side because if you move this term to the left it will become negative e over i h bar but if you move this term uh, move this i up then it will generate another negative sign so it becomes positive so the solution is nothing but the exponential function of this one multiplied by t which is this one and if you still remember uh, e o e equals h bar omega so this is omega and then we find that the t part if uh, if the wave function is not time dependent the time part will be nothing but exponential to negative i omega t or negative j omega t <laughs> if you uh, used to the notation in the signal and system okay so this is the time part what we have uh, explained in the in the textbook so here it also matches the de Broglie relation and and the remaining part is the right side this one the x part equals to e so if you move, move this term to the right side so we have 
this one equals to e phi x and actually this is actually the same as what you have uh, seen on the on the textbook <laughs> that's why it comes up like this uh, that's why it comes up like this and compare a bit so this is the time independent Schrodinger's equation Maybe let me finish it with, we only have a two, two, three more pages. Let me finish it first. Uh, yeah, so actually the Schrodinger's equation is linear. It's linear. Uh, I think in signal system, you know what is linear, so I don't repeat too much. And also in, for Maxwell equation, it's also linear. So you know, uh, if you have a solution, you multiply it by a by a, by a constant, then it's still a, a solution. It's something like that. So, and also, if you have uh, multiple uh, solutions, and then the common, uh, the linear combination of the solution will still be the the solution of the equation. So actually, here we have the wave, uh, this plane wave, as a solution. Uh, for this Schrodinger's equation. So starting from some uh, postulate, the, the um, plane wave to be the solution, and also we sh it should satisfy uh, something like p equals h bar omega, and also um, uh, p, uh, sorry, p equals h bar k, and also uh, e equals h bar omega. Then it comes out with this uh, or interesting uh, so I think just equation. And suppose we know if uh, phi 1, phi 2 are two solutions to the sorting just equation, then the linear combination is also a solution to the sorting just equation. And uh, we know if, if, if this one, we have a frequency and the wave number, and the other one with an other frequency and another uh, wave number, if both of them are also the solution to the Schrodinger's equation, which means the linear combination of them are also solution to the Schrodinger's equation, so it's trivial, which is uh, so it's just like an example. But how about if we have many wave function with different case? Huh? If we have many many wave function, like arbitrary many, infinite many, k, okay, which also satisfy the Schrodinger's equation then it will be like you add all of them together but if you need to add all of them together which is like you are doing the integration because if you have different k and the omega is a function of k something like that because uh, for different k you have an omega so which is like omega is a, uh, is a function of k and then you try to add all of them together for different k. So you integrate it over dk. And this alpha beta, the coefficient in the front, is something like this so-called phi k. So-called phi k. So this integration is the sum of many, many different wave function with different wave number. And then this is a total wave function of the linear combination of all the wave functions. And it should still be the solution to the Schrodinger's equation. And the most interesting part is that if you try to reallocate this term, we have exponential to i k x minus uh, omega t. Then you try to separate them, which is like a, x, a phi k times exponential to i omega t and then here we have exponential to i k x i k x actually this is the inverse Fourier transform <laughs> actually this is the in, uh, uh, Fourier transform for the uh, for the phi k the, this, so this is the wave function in the k domain you take uh, you multiply it by the time time factor and then you take the Fourier transform 
Of course, in signal and system, you do the Fourier transform from time domain to frequency domain, but here we do the Fourier transform from k domain to k domain, which is the wave number domain to the to the x domain, to the x domain, to the position domain. But actually the the mathematical form are actually the same. You have a block with you have a function in k domain and then you multiply it by exponential to i k x. And then you transform this wave function from k domain to, to x domain, which is something like what you have learned in signal and system. Uh, you have a uh, xt times exponential to negative j omega t dt and then integrate from negative infinity to infinity it becomes x j omega something like this so you have a function in time domain you multiply by this one and then integrating over t then you get the function in omega domain so here you have a function in k domain you multiply it by exponential to i k x i k x j omega t k domain to x domain integrating over uh, k this is integrating over t then you get the function in omega domain here and in k domain uh, and in x domain here like this so for some textbook they use uh, positive or negative but it is not a great deal because inverse and forward uh, Fourier transform um, have some symmetric property which is like a, a complex uh, symmetric over the negative axis something like that so yeah so phi xt is the inverse Fourier transform of a phi k multiplied by this exponential uh, function so if the wave function is time independent or let t equals zero phi x is the inverse Fourier transform of a phi k and this let the pain wave positive making more sense because we don't necessarily need to have a, a single frequency single wavelength for the for the wave function if it can construct of arbitrary linear combination of the different wavelength and in that case you know it can be composite into arbitrary uh, wave something like that because you know usually when if the function in time domain is uh, integerable then you can find the Fourier transform of it for different composite of a frequency of a signal then then yeah so so you can you can, you can form uh, arbitrary uh, wave in the time domain Okay, so this is the interesting part for the Schrodinger's equation, and here we cut slightly cover of why uh, the Schrodinger's e equation would like that, and this derivation, although not a rigorous derivation, <laughs> we need, we still need some postulate behind, but uh, it already tells you something related to what we have uh, covered in the original slides in chapter thirty eight and yeah so they matches everything so so i think you should yeah you should take a look of, of it so